Good morning, everyone. My name is Shama Ugle, and I work at ThoughtWorks as a senior QA consultant. Uh, today, in the session, I'll be talking about testing conversation AI, and this is uh, one of my personal experience where I had to strategize uh, testing for uh, one of my projects that I was working as a consultant. It was in my previous role. So, uh, uh, to begin, with, yeah. So, uh, to begin with. Uh, this uh, there is a small uh, you know context that I want to set what kind of uh, problem statement it was. So there is this US uh, brand which is a major brand with uh, beauty industry and they wanted to set up a chatbot and go live with the customers so that they can you know uh, give some capabilities to that bot and help the customers in the non-business hours like uh, you know order management, cancellation of orders, checking the uh, you know, availability of the products or reordering the previous orders and also, you know, uh, if they want to change the pickup, ad, uh, you know, change the addresses or any of the things that they want to do with the order. So that is a small uh, functionality that they wanted to uh, expose through the chatbots to their customers. Now, um, this came to me and I started strategizing things. I, um, you know, created a, a test strategy. I automated it, I put it on build pipelines so that we can give faster feedback to the customers and the developers and also do the release management early. The next part uh, is um, also, you know, doing the monitoring part. Now, while I was working on this uh, project, one fine afternoon, one of my colleague uh, reached out to me and said that uh, she wanted to understand what exactly I'm doing as part of this project. So. Um, so I said, okay, fine, we can have a conversation. And uh, we started having conversation about this. So uh, I was very excited because I got a little, you know, um, opportunity here to, you know, use the f fancy words like AI and to show off a little. So that I can just say that, okay, now I can show off my skills and I've, I can tell that I've worked on AI and I've tested the AI. So I started my conversation with the simple line that the test project is all about testing the chatbot. She immediately stopped me. She said, what? You mean you are going to test a bot? Uh, are you going to tell me that you are going to test that simple tiny window that you get uh, where it pops up and where you can chat with your sales representative? I'm like, uh, no, no, that's not, uh, that's not the live person sitting behind and actually chatting with you. That's a bot. That is built using machine learning, deep learning, AI, NLP, all the fancy words that you have heard about in the industry today. So she was like, then why do you want to test it? Because it is an AI. You don't have to test it. I think you should only test the user interface, see if it is working or not, see if it is on the UI or not, check the presence and you are done. You need only Selenium, you don't have to do anything. So what are you doing? So I said, um, let me explain, okay. And uh, I can tell you what exactly um, it is. And so uh, what actually happens if you don't test an AI? You know, there are certain examples I want to share with you. And I can tell you that why did I choose to test it? And why did I choose to test the AI itself that is working behind the scenes? What happens when the bot will go bad, okay? Yes, it is just a conversation but it may go bad. So there is one, uh, you know, recent, in the recent past, Microsoft uh, released a bot called as Tay on Twitter. It was a chatterbox teenager who was supposed to have conversation with people and see how the human interacts so that it can learn. So that was the only intention. It started with a very simple statement and this was hello world. And if anyone of you are using Twitter here, I'm sure you know how Twitter you know, uh, works and how people start attacking you, right? So same happened with this poor bot and uh, as soon as it started in few minutes, it started, um, you know, uh, supporting Hitler and it became a Hitler fan. And in few more minutes, it learned from the conversation it had with humans and it uh, wanted to build a wall and teach uh, Mexico a lesson. And in some time, it also, you know, uh, started becoming racist. It, becoming, uh, it became racist and gave all the racist comments. So it was so bad and it had, you know, already, uh, you know, damaged all the 
uh, intention and all the reputation that Microsoft had, they had to shut down the uh, bot within 16 hours that they released it. The next is, uh, this is just one of the conversations, right? What if you, uh, what if your bot, whatever it is designed to do, does not even do that? So there is a simple bot which is designed to give you weather information. All you need to do is tell the name of the city and it will tell you what kind of weather it has. So suppose you're planning your trip and you want to know what kind of weather it is so that you can carry things accordingly. You want to carry your sunglasses or umbrella or how do you do that? So this bot simply could not understand a simple word like weekend. So it is very obvious for you uh, as a conversation, you can you may say that I'm planning a trip on this weekend to so and so place. What do I uh, do? What do I should you know carry with me? So it could not understand the word weekend. So it wasn't trained. It wasn't tested for few of the scenarios that it should handle. The simple uh, you know C uh, CNN news bot, which is designed to uh, give you news updates. Uh, the simple task was to unsubscribe from the news notifications that the user was getting. It could not do it. So these are very straightforward, uh, you know, uh, examples where the bot could not do what it was designed for. So this is the functionality that you had to test, right? So it could not do that. So you cannot ignore the functionality of the bot as well. So you have to test it. So finally, she agreed. She said, oh, yeah, I understand uh, the damage can be too much. So you will have to test that. But I see that, you know, there is still a challenge. How can you test a conversation? It's nearly impossible to cover all the conversations that any human may have with anybody. So all you're trying to do is testing a conversation. I said, right. Uh, even uh, more than that, there are some more challenges as well with all the bots. They are self-learning. In the testing, uh, we know that we have a typical test case where we have uh, test data, steps, and then what do I need to expect as an output? Think of this scenario where you do not have a fixed output. Every now and then the output keeps changing because the AI will learn itself and it, it may do better or it may do worse. But how do you know? If you have to test it, how do you know what you should expect, right? So that is the challenge. These systems will keep continuously learning and improve and it becomes very uh, you know, challenging for you to test them. Second thing is it is non-linear input. That means um, if you have to do a particular task, let's say you want to book tickets from uh, Bangalore to London. You, uh, if you want to do that, you will go to any of the UI applications or mobile applications. You know that this is the screen where I need to put the from to city. I have to choose the date from this field and all I need to do is uh, you know check the options and choose one of the options and go ahead make the payment and I'm done. Think about the bot. You have to have a conversation to do it. You do not have any set of uh, steps that you have to do. You may start with looking from dates and the date formats may change. Uh, if I'm from India, I may from, you know follow a date format like MM, uh, DD, MMYY. Uh, the people from the other part of the world may follow some other different, you know, uh, date formats. What if they uh, come here and they want to book a ticket from Bangalore to London and they give the input like uh, uh, MMDDYY? The chatbot that you're talking to has to understand and process that, right? If it is not designed to handle these scenarios, it will fail. It will, it may book some different ticket altogether. And the day you will appear on the airport, they'll not allow you to board the flight. Think about this, right? So uh, the next is non-deterministic user interactions. They may start from one conversation. They may have other conversation in between. And it will have no flow to altogether. You will have to also remember the uh, conversations you had. And you have to give appropriate responses. Also, there is no barrier to the users. You cannot stop the user to ask you any other certain questions. You have, they, you have to make sure that if you don't understand, you fail gracefully and get the user back to the conversation with your own capabilities, right? How do you do that? And that too with conversation. So before uh, you, you know how to test it, it is better to understand how exactly it works. So once you understand any application, how it works, then is when you can strategize your testing. And that is what I did. I started understanding how 
uh, the chatbot works and what it does is it will uh, the the main engine here is the NLP engine which will understand what a human has uh, is interacting with what are the text it will understand what is the human trying to do and then process it accordingly right and then uh, maybe as part of your implementation you might want to go back to your databases and get some information and then provide for example you want to uh, search flights from a uh, source to destination you might want to talk to an API or you might want to talk to your databases and then fetch that information give it to the user and uh, maybe you know later on take the conversation ahead so you might want to also uh, handle all of uh, these but here today we'll be only talking about how do you test the understanding of the, uh, the uh, language and how do you process it and how do you validate whether it is processing it and responding you correctly or not. So as part of the uh, next conversation, I, um, I explained her like, okay, uh, this is what, how it works and I, what I need to do is I need to also understand how this sentences that I enter as a conversation are understood by my bot. So what bot does is NLP engine, it will tokenize all the words that you have given and try to identify intent. What is the goal that the user is trying to achieve? Uh, booking flights, I'm trying to book a flight. Checking the order status, I'm trying to check the status of my order, right? So those are the examples. And then what is utterance? It is the different way I can ask for the same question. I can say, I want to fly from uh, Bombay to Pune. I want to go to Bombay to Pune. I want tickets. Give me tickets. Show me tickets. These are all different ways I can ask a bot to do the same thing. So bot will also have to understand and it will have to understand the utterances. What is entity? It will have to, uh, you know, extract the variables. I want to fly from Mumbai to Pune. Mumbai and Pune is uh, the source and the destination, right? So it will extract these entities and then process accordingly, call the APIs, talk to the uh, databases, and then give you the output, right? And then the next is channel. The channel is nothing where and how the user is actually interacting uh, through your bot. So uh, you might have, you know, uh, deployed your bot to any of the uh, chat engines, right? Like your WhatsApp, your Skype or Kik or uh, Telegram, right? Or it might be part of your uh, web or it might be also part of a mobile application. So that is a channel and through the channel, you will connect to your uh, uh, engine, right? Which is an NLP engine and then it is uh, interacting with the APIs and the databases. So this is the entire setup. So this is how your typical request would look like. The first thing that will happen is uh, it will uh, take the entire utterance. So all the sentences are utterances. It will find the intent. Okay. It will uh, break all the words into tokens and try to find what is the intent. The next is it will extract all the entities and then it will process this. Once I understand how does it work, the next is, how do I start testing this? Definitely, first thing is I'll have to start uh, designing my test cases. Second is, I will have to definitely automate it. I cannot be uh, running all my test cases across, uh, uh, across all the platforms that I have made my bot available and across all the builds, right? And the next part, a uh, very important part for any of the bot testing is crowd testing. So as a first thing, Still, the question remains the same, right? How do I cover all the kind of conversations any human would have? So she started again questioning me the same thing. I, I understood everything that you told me. I understand how the bot works. I understand how NLP works. But still, how are you going to cover all the conversations? So what you need to do is you need to categorize your bot into different categories. And for each of the category, you'll have to write tests. The first category in this is personality. Through bot, think about this. If I ask you to get a task done through a bot, like booking a flight, would you like to do that? 
how many of you will trust that bot completely and blindly go and say I am okay going and booking my ticket do you have that trust why don't you have that trust because it is a bot you don't want to talk to a bot right you don't want to talk to a bot and especially you don't want to do any transaction with it you don't trust it right what if I tell you that there is a salesperson as she thought there is a salesperson you can do it through chatting you'll be still comfortable right oh I don't need to go to a UI put everything wait and do that but if I give a uh, chat uh, application wherein I have to just open and say I want to go from this to this place this is the date and they give me the tickets wow and if I tell it is a sales representative fine I'll be okay right so what does it mean it should give me a human touch the moment you will understand that this is a bot you will go away I, I'm not sure if anybody would like to still go ahead with it so you will have to first give a human touch so think about this if you go to a counter and talk to a sales representative and say uh, I want to test uh, sorry not test. I want to uh, book tickets so the first thing is that person you know they will have a name they will tell you okay I can help you with booking the tickets or what do you want to do these are the options I have so that is how the conversation goes so the personality of the bot is very important you have to design test cases and make sure if your bot does not have a name you give a name to it you introduce yourself to a person who is talking to you I am so and so I can do this for you so that the person knows that what are your capabilities and what you can do for them and then the conversation starts right rather than just saying hi so that is the first kind of test that you will cover the second part of test cases that you will design is onboarding uh, you have to tell what your capabilities are uh, unless you are Siri or Google Assistant the next is intelligence so in this inter intelligence think of this okay if I have to order food and I have a bot and uh, I decide to uh, you know uh, and I take a home delivery option and I have to give them my address uh, there are some people you know they will give all the address together very nicely in a better format like they'll give you the flat number the road the area and everything think about the people like me who give hundred lines of uh, you know uh, sentences I'll first give my flat number next line I'll give something else then I'll directly give me area then maybe I'll give my building name and then maybe I'll put the city so bot should understand how to process multi-step conversations and it has to also understand till where I need to wait for the user to complete it when I need to ask for the user for more details right and when I need to start processing so these are the kind of tests that you'll have to uh, cover as well also you'll have to cover uh, many utterances asking the same question uh, same thing differently then comes the most important thing error management think about this if I ask you something you don't know the answer all you'll say is I don't know every time I ask you differently else you'll say I don't know how how long will ha you have the conversation with me no right so you'll have to fail gracefully there are multiple ways you can say that okay I don't know maybe I can do this for you if not then maybe you know you can contact this person or you can contact your fail gracefully next is understanding uh, you'll have to understand small talks I cannot directly jump to uh, the task I'll have to have a little conversation maybe if someone is asking me how are you doing today I should be responding to it if you're asking um, you are greeting me I should greet you back so you should do small talks you should also understand the abbreviations if I'm using uh, especially these teenagers right I don't understand at least what they say but uh, understanding teenagers is very important they'll use all the shortcuts they'll do a lot of spelling mistakes they'll use a lot of uh, I don't know bad words uh, love words and they'll send you a lot of emojis pictures I don't know what all so you'll have to understand what does that mean right so your bot will also have to be intelligent enough to understand this and respond appropriately cover these test cases as well and the next is very important speed and accuracy accuracy is very important I'm asking for something you're giving me something else so response is not important the right response is more important the next is navigation this is again very important when it comes to a conversation AI uh, through applications if you want to go back to a previous screen you can easily use the back button and say cancel 
but think of uh, bots. You are having the conversation, you want to go back to the previous conversation. Suppose you are doing the order and then you realize you won't be uh, able, you know, you won't be at home at that point in time to pick the delivery. So you'll have, uh, you'll say, oh no, wait, I want to do a pickup. So what if the bot does not understand to go back and the change the request? So these test cases you'll have to include in your test cases. So once you have designed all your test cases, the next part comes test automation. You want to automate it and you don't want to do all of this repeatedly. Think of the utterances you have. Would you like to sit and type all of these sentences and validate it every time? You cannot do that, right? You simply cannot do that. So how do I automate? So uh, I was looking for a lot of tools there. I even at some point in time, I decided to write my own script to uh, you know put certain assertions. But finally, I found this tool and I was very happy because I'm a Selenium user for a decade. And this tool also has similar syntax, okay? I don't have to really uh, struggle a lot or understand or you know do uh, put in a lot of efforts to learn this tool and then use. So it's a simple uh, Selenium based. I wrote code, but even you can write your test cases. The test cases that you wrote uh, for having the conversation, you can use the same test cases, put it in the plain text file and automate it. It's that simple. So I started uh, you know, exploring this more. And this tool has a lot of things right, to offer. It has the command line. It has also the integrations with your uh, you know, Jasmine, Mocha, anything that you want to uh, you know, connect with. Then it also has a beautiful UI based tool where you can, uh, you know, if you do not want to do coding or if you're not a coder and you still want to automate everything, you can still do that with this tool. And you can put it in your, you, know, you can integrate it in your uh, CI CD build pipelines and you can just make uh, yourself free, okay? So I can just show you uh, uh, how to do this. I'll be doing some demo. So uh, to install, this is again a node application. So the first requirement is you have to have node uh, installed. And then uh, this is, uh, so for CLI, you will do npm install uh, botium CLI. And then if you want to uh, connect to any of your bots. So there are a lot of bot engines. It may be Microsoft Lewis, it may be uh, Google Dialogflow, it may be anything, right? Uh, IBM Watson, any engine that you're using, they have connectors available with it. And all you can do is you can connect to your bot and then start writing your test cases, automate them and put it on the CI CD. And uh, uh, if you want to use uh, Botium Box, which is a UI based tool, you can do that as well. You can put it on your local or you can also use any of the cloud instances. You can also install it on your uh, local clouds. So uh, this is how a typical, uh, I'll, you know, um, setup looks like for a dialogue flow. I'll just take you through. So this is my dialog flow, right? And this is my bot agent that I have. I have all my intents and everything mapped here. Uh, all I need to do is create a service account here and extract the information that Botium is looking to connect to your bot. Uh, the information that bot, uh, Botium looks for is the project name. This is, uh, you can give any project name. This is for your reference and the reporting purposes. Uh, container mode has to be dialog flow. And then uh, you can, you'll have to give the Google project ID, service credentials, and then the uh, private key. And all you can do that is using your service accounts, okay? You can go to service accounts and you can do that. So uh, I have also given a reference link in my slide so you can uh, go through that documentation. It is a very simple step. Once you have that information, you can connect to your board and so you can start testing your conversations. So uh, what are the various ways that you can write test cases is, as I said, uh, whatever uh, conversation test cases you have written in your you know, plain text or Excel sheets, mostly people prefer to write in Excel sheets, you can use the same sheets and uh, put it on your CI CD. Uh, all you need to do is a little uh, efforts you need to take to just format it a little bit, which I'll taking you through. And you can also put it on the CSV files or you, if you like writing code, 
you can write you know you can write test cases using javascript and it is very simple it is just like your selenium syntax okay i'll quickly give you a demo on this how exactly we do uh, i have created a small uh, you know agent on dialogflow which is a coffee shop all i'll need to do is i'll need to order a coffee any drink or snacks and uh, uh, I can uh, choose whether I want a delivery or pickup and, and then I can use the card and then go ahead. I have not given card details or any of that sort but yes that is the simple flow that I have used. So uh, I will show you through the bottom box that I have already set up. Okay, So this is the bottom box that is running on my local if you see. Uh, can you see this or do you want me to increase the is this visible okay so it's running on my local and uh, if I want to register a bot uh, you can go to bot register a new bot and say what kind of bot is it okay so you have all the options here any technology if you're using so I am using Google dialog flow so I have selected dialog flow and here is what the information you need to give uh, you will get a JSON file from the service accounts that you have on your uh, uh, dialog flow okay and all you can do is download that file and drop that file here automatically it will extract all the information that it needs and you can connect so I have already set up this so here is my bot okay and you can get a window here to do the live chat as well if you wish to do so you can do your manual test cases here so let's say connect and I can start having conversation okay I can say I want to tea and then I say I'll I'll need a pickup okay so simple conversations and once you have uh, the conversations maybe you might want to save this as a test case you can also do save as test case and you can give the name to the test case okay and say okay so you're ready to go with using this test cases and put it for automation it is as simple as that okay so uh, what I've done is I've already created test cases and this is called your test sets so let us have a look at what kind of test cases that I have already created okay and how do you write it. So you can write your test cases in this fashion. So if you see this uh, you will have to have a text file okay where you will record all the conversations. All uh, you the first line is the name of your test case the second line would be hash and me. So whatever you write after this will be the uh, text that you want to send to a bot. Okay, this is your request and hash bot and whatever sentences you record here would be the uh, responses that you want to assert for, you want to look for. Okay, so this is a simple scenario, a very straightforward test case where I ask for something, I'm expecting something. Okay, so this conversation can go on. Now, can you think about something here which may change and which may fail? Yeah, so it is good morning, right? And after, after one hour it will say good afternoon, your test cases will fail. So is it a failure? It's not a failure, right? So what do you do? You want to parameterize it, right? In automation world you would, you would say I want to parameterize this, I don't want to use this, right? So what you want to do is you want to extract all of that, put in an utterances file and use that utterances here. Okay, so uh, utterances may be in the uh, request that you are sending. I may say hi, someone else may say hello, someone else may say hey, right? So there are different ways I can have a conversation with the utterances that we just spoke about. So what I'll do, I'll create a file called as utterances, hello utterances, thank you utterances, sorry utterances, all the utterances. I'll put all the phrases that I can use to do the same thing. I'll list down and then in the bot section, I can list on all the sentences and all the responses that a bot can respond and that I can put it in uh, another utterances file and in me and bot section now I will not 
use any plain text but I'll use this utterances files. What will happen is, so whatever uh, utterances that you have as part of me will be like your data driven. All, uh, you know, every single utterances will be sent to the bot and it will check for the responses in your responses utterance file. That, okay, this is my first utterance, I'll send that request. I'll look for the bot utterances file and see, is it responding in any of these sentences? So if it is fine, then okay, that is passed. It will move on to the next utterance. So it will be like a data driven. So it will pick all the utterances, validate against all the responses that you have uh, recorded for your bot utterances. This way you can have a lot of combinations in a single file and you need not to write all your test cases separately again and again. Okay, this is the second step. Then there is another uh, way as well. Uh, if you see that if you talk to some of the bots, they will give you some images or uh, you know pictures or buttons or links, right? So you want to validate them as well. How do you validate? Again, same, same format. All you need to use is buttons. So in the bot section, if you say buttons, that is what it is responding with. And if you want to click on a button as a user, you, in the me section, you will say button and then you will give the name of the button that the bot is giving. So that will actually trigger the click, okay? So uh, it is that simple. And end of the day, uh, after I test all my, you know, uh, test cases that I've designed for a bot and NLP, I want to also test the user interface. If it is integrated with any of the app or if it is integrated with your web, you want to check if it is working there or not, right? You want to go to that web and you want to actually do that. So that is the next step. So this is how you can cover all the uh, different uh, cases and you can start automating. I'll just show some of the demo that I have already created these test sets. So if you see that I have created this test set, okay? Um, so the, I have two utterances files, okay? One is hello and one is thank you. And I have this small talk where if you see, this is how I have written, right? I have used utterances files wherever I want to match it with any of the responses that the bot gives and it is not fixed. So once I set up all of these, all I need to do is um, go to the test projects and run or else I can just simply start running. It failed, right? So let's see why did it fail. Yeah. So in the utterances file, I have not put by and I have put till next time. So by is not there in my utterances file. So it said that I was expecting this, but uh, this is what I got the response and this is a failure. Now, what do I do here? Uh, think of the scenario that you trained your bot and you have added some thousands of utterances, right? And you trained your bot. Now it starts using some, some uh, other responses as well. What do you do now? You cannot go to each of the utterances file and every time say that, okay, whenever you train, I'll have to go and add these many, right? That will also become tedious. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, if, I, uh, if this is the intent, make sure that you will respond me which matches this intent, okay? So in your dialog flow, you will have certain intents and you will have all the training phrases that you have trained your bot for. Now, as you keep on training them, I cannot keep my test cases, but I'll say uh, the response should match whatever responses that you have trained for from this intent. So I'll now put an assertion on the intent level and not put the assertions on the sentences level. So this way I can also validate that the, uh, the bot is actually identifying the intent correctly and it is validating my intent and it is picking up any of the new training data that I have given. I don't have to really care about all the utterances that I'm recording as of now. So that is the other way that you can do.
okay. So, you can cover each and everything like this and uh, once this is there, I will also need to put my test cases and run them through a interface. So, I will be uh, running this on a source lab, okay. I have uh, my browsers and I have all my devices set up. If you want to add more or if you want to also add uh, your uh, source lab or you know uh, your local selenium grid if you want you can put up your local selenium grid and connect and run you can do that as well so what you need to do is you need to just go here and say device providers and you can set up uh, and you can give your credentials for your source lab or you can give credentials to your uh, local uh, say uh, you know selenium grid if you want or your apm right for the mobile devices the next is you can uh, register all the devices that you want to test it against. You will list it here and in your test all you can do is, sorry, label them, okay. You just label your test cases, say I want to run these test cases on this, this device and this particular uh, platform and all I can do is start running these test cases. I will quickly show you on my source lab account, okay. So, hold on a second. Oh, okay, sorry, I ran the so actually this was for the buttons, so this is how you can, um, you know, capture the buttons and the images uh, using the buttons and the links and the images assertions that we had. So let me, uh, sorry for pulling up that. Just give me a moment. Uh, this is going to look good. Oh, okay. Sorry, I have to just log in. I can just show you the uh, test cases that I just ran, you know, a um, few hours ago. So, uh, this is what the test case I ran which I just, uh, you know, um, integrated with my source lab. This is on the browser, if you see. Uh, this is, um, you know, integrated with your web browser. And the test cases for mobile was uh, APM, here it is. So this was on the Android device that I had selected. So it picks the Android emulator, whatever device that you have set up and it will pick that device and uh, it will run. So I have done it on source labs because uh, I didn't want to set it on my local and get into trouble. So so it will connect to your APM. You have connectors with your Selenium APM and all the uh, NLP engines that you have. So you can choose to run through your user interfaces on the apps 
or you can also choose to only uh, test your connectors or any of the technology in the backend that you have used. So uh, this is all about uh, the automation, but it's still not ready to go live, right? Uh, can you think why? Why is it not ready to go live? You have done test case design, you have automated it, it is on the CI CD build pipeline, you are getting the faster feedbacks, everything is in place, but still you cannot go live and you cannot face the world. Right, that's right. Exactly, so how do you get that data? As a tester, I have my limitations of thinking of the utterances, the words, right? Uh, look at my, um, it, it depends on my personality, my background, and uh, where I come from, my language, everything, right? So I, I have limited, uh, you know, a set of utterances that I can use. So what I can do is, I'll have to open it for a different set of people who can give me more data. So I can, you know, as I told you, I, I just don't understand teenagers, but I cannot behave as a teenager and collect all the data. To do that, I have to go to the teenagers and ask them to give me this data. So what I'll do, I'll handpick people and open it for crowd testing. So you'll have to handpick people from different backgrounds, from the people who are really tech, tech savvy, who do not understand technology and very simple users, who are from different professions, who are from a different age groups and geographies so that you can collect as much as more utterances and as much as more data. You can train your uh, bot and then you can say, okay, I at least have covered a little bit ground and now I can go live so that I have at least covered a more uh, uh, ground is what I can say. Next is once you open it for your crowd testing, you have trained your data, I will next do, want to do is monitor it and see how is it performing, right? I, will, I, cannot, I cannot just say that I'm done and uh, my bot is there, it has, it has been trained and it is performing. I also have to constantly see how do I measure the quality. So you'll have to see the goal completion rate. How many of you, tell me this, how many of times have you uh, interacted with any bot and you could get what you wanted and easily without any frustration and irritation? like the way you would do it with any of the human interaction, not right. So you'll we'll have to see how many people could complete what they wanted to see. Like, you know, if you wanted to book the tickets, if it starts asking you many questions and it uh, starts taking you from here and there, you might want not to continue and you will just quit. I have done that, right. So you'll have to see goal completion rate and that is where you can say that yes, my bot is successful. The next is service, uh, self-service, that how many times bot did it all on its own and did not, you know, uh, intervene the human uh, sales representative or it asked you to talk to the rep representative and gave the email addresses and phone numbers and just shut down, right? So you'll have to also see that how, how many times it was successful on its own and did not take any help. Error rates, how many times it did not understand the user and it fall back to the uh, you know, fallbacks that we call, like it did not understand, it kept asking the same question. How many uh, times, uh, you know, it hit all the intents and what were the uh, success AIM ML rates? How many times it learned? User retention rates is how many times the same user kept coming back to you is what you have to collect. And the most important thing is after you have your conversation, get the feedback from the user that you have interacted with and see where you can improvise. And this is the most important thing is that what I feel, so that you can improve your quality better and you can even serve your customers better and better, right? So that is it and now you can say, and you can say go and you know, put your bot live and bot can say hello world. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> Any questions? Do we have any questions? Yeah. 
so i was having a doubt like uh, if there is one indian company who, which is implementing ai and uh, their uh, customers are from outside the country like us and uk or some other japan and chinese and all so uh, how they are going to hand pick the audience and uh, they are going to tell them that analyze or use that thing so that uh, basically utterances how we will be able to collect actually that was the doubt was there yeah so the uh, the utterances that you'll have to collect is from the geographical location only because the user base is there so uh, most of the common utterances you may uh, you know come up with but uh, you know something which is regional based or the jargons or anything that they use has to come from there so the crowd testing is the best way that you can do and uh, also you have a lot of data sets available so the botium also has a lot of data sets available to, uh, made to you based on the uh, different domains that you are working on if it is a banking app or if it is a e-commerce or if it is beauty or anything of that sort they have sets and they have it geographical as well they have in dutch they have in english so i have gone through that you can use that and still i believe that crowd testing is the most important thing when you want to collect test data with respect to bots and when you do this hand picking the right set of people is more important you cannot do that in india right you have to do it there you have to pick people there and you have to cover as much as people there with a different mindset professions age group so that you can get relevant data as what i'm saying i guess we need to take the other questions offline with shama sure uh, thank you shama thank you